memories and things to go back to. Both of my grandfathers, though, their first and second name were Friedrich Wilhelm. <laughs> and that's, I know, not only popular, but that was the name of the emperor before them. And uh, the rumor, of course, that I, Grandpa had was that if you, if you had seven boys in the family, and, and they were named after Friedrich the Wilhelm, that he would adopt them and give them all the money that they needed. <laughs> I don't think they, my grandfathers got there. They came here instead. <laughs> but anyway, my grandfather, one grandfather who lived down the street from us as we were kids, during Prohibition, they used to make a lot of moonshine, but mostly beer and wine, and uh, they called it bathtub gin or whatever. And it must have been happened here in Burkholz as well. It was not illegal to make it, it was illegal to sell it. So my grandfather talks about him and the guy down at the corner who used to have a little competition. The competition was in cider. How do you make cider and how does it taste? And they would compete with each other, who made the best cider? Well, Grandpa had a way of taking care of the expenses he, uh, they had a old farmhouse that had a back entrance into the basement, like old houses do. And so he would leave that open most of the time anyway. But anybody who was in the neighborhood who wanted could go down in his basement. And there was a table there, and there were lots of bottles. And you could take whatever you want, and there was a dish there for you to leave what you thought was worth. He wasn't selling it, but, you know, that's how he... That's how he handled it. And he always had enough to make more. And he had plenty of apple trees to choose from. So when I went through the junk that Grandpa left, I wish I would have gone through it a lot sooner to see what I missed saving. I know he had a big wine press, too, that, that got dis disappeared somehow. But I f found the pieces to an old bottle capper. And I gave it to my cousin who's a woodworker, and he put a wood base on this thing, cleaned it all up and everything. And since I made beer, he knew I needed to cap my bottles. So if you take a bottle and put it in here at the right, this, this is adjustable height, so you can take a big bottle or a small bottle. And you put the cap in here, and then you pull it on on it until it's tight, and then and you've got the bottle cap. <laughs> My friend looked at this and he said, you know how many caps they can put on bottles down with the machinery? <laughs> About a million a minute. <laughs> this would take forever, but it was a sure way of getting your bottles capped. And believe it or not, the first capped bottles in the 1800s, they're the same size that we use today for all bottles. Uh, I mean, there's, the champagne bottles are a little bigger, but the other ones are regular size. And they fit in here. And you can, you can cap, I, I use this, but it sure is awkward to use this thing. Uh, the ones they make now are much easier to do. <laughs> but anyway, if you want to see what an old bottle capper was to make beer, and uh, my grandpa, who specialized in cider, uh, did that, but he made beer too. And when we had a party or something, and even in the 40s or when I was a kid, they would order a keg of beer and you get the keg and get it working and everybody could have plenty to drink. Well, Grandpa hated it when the party was over and the keg wasn't empty. You don't, you know, Germans don't waste anything, right? So he could sit there until the wee hours of the night and keep drinking because it wasn't gone yet, you know. <laughs> but the other thing he tried was, well, if you've got bottles, maybe we could put this extra beer in the bottles and put a cap on them. Right? Makes sense. The only thing was he didn't realize about fermentation too much because the next morning when he got up, all the bottles had blown. <laughs> uh, but he had fun anyway. We all had fun with him. Grandpa was always having fun. And I think he was having fun because he knew how to drink the right stuff. Anyway, I don't have a big use for this. My cousin who made this, his name's on here, uh, put it together for me, cleaned it all up and brushed it and painted it and everything else. Um, gave it to me, and I don't, I'm not an antique collector, but if anybody wants this 
at Doc's house or in the collection of stuff you have over there. I'm sure we had a beer maker in the community, and this is what they used to, to put the caps on the bottle so everybody could take one home.